Hi folks, let's look at another compatibility equation problem. So this time we've got two bars, each made out of different material. So in the diagram below, we've got one material fabricated from steel, another material fabricated from brass. And these materials have been connected in series and placed between two walls when the initial temperature is at 10 degrees C. So the problem tasks us to calculate the force exerted on the rigid supports when the temperature increases from 10 degrees C to 20 degrees C. So in the diagram below, we've got the following information. So we've been given the Young's modulus for steel to be at 200 GPA. The cross-sectional area is given as 200 millimeters squared. And we've also been given some information in terms of the thermal property of the material. So the linear coefficient of expansion has been given at 12 times 10 to the power minus 6 per centigrade. For the brass, we've been given the Young's modulus to be 100 GPA. The cross-sectional area is slightly higher or larger than that of the steel at 450 millimeters squared. And we've also been given the linear coefficient of thermal expansion to be at 21 micro per centigrade. So how do we go about solving this particular problem? And the expected answer of this problem should yield a result of 6.99 kilo newton. So I've provided further diagrams to characterize the problem that we need to solve. So from, I think, chapter five, when we talked about thermal um, loads or thermal stresses, we did state that when materials either increase in temperature or decrease in temperature, there is some measure of deformation experience in the material. So in this instance, we have a thermal expansion due to the increase in temperature. Thus, the brass and the steel will be extended linearly. As a result, there is that possibility of that measure of extension eaten or breaking or penetrating to the wall. Thus, we need to calculate what is that measure of reaction that will keep the material in series in equilibrium to ensure that at the point of entry against the wall, that measure of equilibrium prevents further extension of the material into the wall. So that's what we've characterized as RA. So how do we go about calculating this particular problem? So let's have a go working through this problem. So this is a very quick summary of what we just calculated. So to calculate the extension, the extension delta I is equal to alpha times delta theta times L I. So the coefficient of linear expansion is characterized by alpha. The temperature differential is characterized by alpha theta, or you can characterize it by alpha T. And the original length per material or per component of the composite is characterized by L subscript I. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the extension in each individual uh, component of the composite. So for steel, the extension in steel, so that's being characterized by delta S, that'll be equal to the product of 12 micro per centigrade times the difference of the temperature, which would be 20 minus 10, times 300 millimeters. And that will yield a result of 0 0.036 millimeters. We do likewise for the brass section. So extension of the brass, so that is delta B, that'll be equal to 12 times 10 to the power minus six, times the difference in temperature, which will be 10 times 300 millimeters. And that will equate to 0 0.063 millimeters. 
So the total extension experience in the composite bar, so we're going to characterize that as delta T. The total extension should be equal to the extension experience in the steel component of the composite plus the extension experienced by the brass component of the composite. So that'll be equal to 0 0.036 plus 0 0.063 and that will yield a total extension in the composite bar to measure 0 0.099 millimeters. So for us to calculate the measure of the force that's going to counter the extension experienced by the composite, we're going to be using the deflection, axial deflection formula. So to determine RW, so that is basically the reaction from the wall, we've already seen this formula before. So axial deflection, so that deflection is equal to the internal force, so the internal force is N times the original length divided by the product of the cross section of area per segment times X Young's modulus. So the legend tells us exactly what these notations represent. So we're going to look at, okay, in the purposes of equilibrium, then we are stating that the extension due to the reaction from the wall will be equal to the extension due to the thermal load experienced by the composite. So if that's the case, then we can then define the total extension experience in the material to be equal to the reaction times the length of the steel section of the composite divided by the product of the cross-sectional area and the Young's minimalist of the steel section plus the reaction times the length of the brass section of the composite divided by the product of the area and the Young's modulus of the brass composite. So since RW is common for steel and is common for the brass, then we can factorize WR, uh, RW sorry, from the expression to have RW is equal to, uh, sorry, delta T is equal to RW times into bracket the ratio of the length to the product of the area and Young's modulus for steel plus the ratio of the length of the brass to the product of the area times the Young's modulus for brass. So therefore, making RW or the reaction subject of this problem, this would give RW is equal to delta T. So delta T is the total extension experienced by the composite divided by the product, uh, sorry, the ratio of the length of steel to the product of its cross-sectional area in Young's modulus plus the ratio of the length of the brass to the product of its area times its elastic modulus. So by substituting the known variable, so we calculated the total extension of the composite to be 0 0.099 the length of the steel segment is given as 300 millimeters, the area 200 millimeters squared, and the Young's model is given as 200 kilo newton per millimeter squared. And it's likewise for the brass section, so the length is given as 300 in the problem, the cross section area is given as 450 millimeters squared, and the Young's model is given as 100 times 10 to the power 3 newton per meter squared. Square. So by doing the needed computation, that yields a total force of 6,988.22 newtons, which is approximately 6.99 kilonewtons. And there we have it.